Excellencies, heads of state and government, distinguished heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, our strongly held view is that it is not enough to check Al Shabaab. Somalia must heal completely and stand on, on its own feet. In our view, there are a number of bottlenecks that stop the complete healing of Somalia. Number one, the absence of patriotic pan-Somali political parties. There may be individuals who have got a pan-Somalia outlook. These individuals, however, need to form political parties with a patriotic national outlook away from the bankrupt ideology of clanism being pushed by opportunists. The recent election of the president by an overwhelming consensus seems to be a healthy seed for the future. This patriotic idea, however, needs to be translated into political organizations. Two, the same patriotic ideas must then be infused in the Somali National Army, recruited on a quarter basis from all the parts of, of the country. Three, this army needs officers, needs NCOs, needs specialists in addition to the ordinary soldiers. Four, the multiplicity of trainers from different countries of the Somali army needs to be coordinated by the Somali command around a, small, a Somali forces military doctrine so that it becomes a cohesive force with a clear historical mission. Five, the Somalis need to resolve the issue of whether they will rebuild the Somali army by pay or by patriotism. If it is to be by pay, who will pay them? Who will pay these soldiers? Is the Somali state able to pay a large army on that big territory of 637,000 square kilometers it needs so as to pacify the whole country? The present partial pacification of the country is not good enough. Can the international community agree to pay a large Somali army for some years so that the whole liberated Somali territory can be used to generate revenues to pay the public servants and also cope with other obligations. Six, the Somali army and the soldiers from the troop contributing countries could be further equipped to do more road projects in the areas of their responsibility along with the local authorities so that the country is opened up. They can also build schools and health centers for the benefit of the people. The liberation has to resonate with the people in the countryside. Seven, in the meantime, the troop contributing countries should be supported sufficiently, their small numbers notwithstanding, to use force multipliers, gunships, attack planes, airlift means, to further weaken Al Shabaab in their remote hideouts. Our concept of counterinsurgency is to have mobile forces to hit the enemy and then the zone of forces to ensure that the enemy does not reinfest the areas that are liberated. It should be the Somali army to provide this zone of forces. If they cannot do it yet, what should we do? That is why we propose long jump operations to eliminate them by surprise attacks. It is better than giving them extended holidays without any punishment for their mistakes and allowing them to create liberated areas by default. Eight, there, is, there, is, there, there are the short-term issues of the drought and other short-term issues uh, of relief, some minimum rehabilitation, and so on. We need to provide relief so that the long-suffering people of, the, of Somalia do not die from this additional problem. Nine, apart from the, the drought, however, the international community could harness the power of the Somali business class. Do the Somali businessmen supply the massive relief items that are delivered to Somalia? Or is it the foreign businesses that supply these items? Our view is that the harnessing the power of the Somali business class would not only be good for the economy of the country, but would also be good for the politics of the country. I thank you. I, I thank His Excellency, the President of 